to our seventh window from St. Mark's 2020 online Advent calendar. Today's scripture comes from Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Most people will not think of the more contemporary Christmas song, Do You Hear What I Hear, as a Christmas carol. Obviously, it's far more recent in its origin, but the story behind it warrants a closer look. In October 1962, musician Noel Regney walked through the streets of Manhattan, the weight of despair in his heart, reflecting the unsmiling faces of people as they passed by on the street. A war of words and maneuvers called the Cold War, held the world in its icy grip with the United States and the Soviet Union were heating the Cold War to the nuclear boiling point in a confrontation over the Soviet Union, installing missiles capable of striking most of continental United States in Cuba, just 90 miles away. History labeled this confrontation the Cuban Missile Crisis. Noel Regney felt terrified for his family, his country, and for the survival of the human race. He had fought in World War II and had experienced the fear and terror of war and death firsthand. Now he worried that the secure life he had built for himself and his family in the United States teetered on the nuclear brinkmanship. He tried to think about something else. Christmas, the time of peace on earth and goodwill, hovered just a few months away, and a record producer had asked him to write a Christmas song. He later recalled that he thought he would never write a Christmas song because Christmas had become so commercial. Then, on his way home, Noel saw two mothers taking their babies for a walk in their strollers. He watched the two babies looking at each other and smiling, and his mood lifted from despair to hope. Noel's mind turned to poetry and babies and lambs. By the time he arrived home, he had composed the lyrics of Do You Hear What I Hear in his head. As soon as he arrived home, he jotted down the lyrics that he had written in his head, and he asked his wife, Gloria, to write the music to match his words. The Regnies usually collaborated using the exact opposite method. Gloria would write the words, and Noel would write the music. This time, they switched roles. Gloria later said, Noel wrote a beautiful song, and I wrote the music. However, we couldn't sing it through. It broke us up. We cried. Our little song broke us up. You must realize there was a threat of nuclear war at the time. The song chronicles a message from the night wind, which travels first to the lamb, then to a shepherd boy, next to a mighty king, and finally, to people everywhere. Each mentions a familiar Christmas symbol, a star, a song, and the Christ child. The ultimate message of this song is that we bring our gifts to the manger, for this holy child brings goodness and light to the world. For a moment, let's turn the clock back to 1952. During that year, Noel immigrated to the United States and moved to Manhattan. As well as writing serious musical compositions, he composed, arranged, and conducted music for many early TV shows and wrote commercial jingles for radio. 
One day he walked into the dining room of a Manhattan hotel and saw a beautiful woman playing popular music on the piano. He introduced himself and in a month he and Gloria were married. Their daughter, Gabrielle, described her mother as an extraordinary pianist and composer who had perfect pitch. Noel and Gabriel composed the popular music together and separately. Bing Crosby, Perry Como, Robert Goulet, Susan Boyle, and Andy Williams are just a few of the artists that have recorded the more than 120 versions of Do You Hear What I Hear in musical styles ranging from jazz to reggae. Bing Crosby's version in 1963 sold more than a million copies. According to Noel's obituary, he favored the Robert Goulet version of the song. In 1985 interview, Noel said, I'm amazed that people can think they know the song and not know it's a prayer for peace. But we are so bombarded by sound and our attention spans are so short that we now listen only to catchy beginnings. Let us pray. Dear God of Christmas, at a time when our world remains deeply divided, at odds and at risk, help us to take the time to notice the night wind that heralds the birth of the Prince of Peace. Let us take comfort in his promise, in his grace, and in his liberating love. Amen.